Hi there and welcome to the channel and we begin with that most English of things, an apology, not of the groveling kind, not of the abject variety, but of the simple sort. I'm truly sorry for how much time has elapsed since my last video. The truth of the matter is I've been incredibly busy in the month of March with my job, going to classes, tutoring undergraduates, doing my research and yes, reading. And in those circumstances, I just didn't feel able to make videos of the kind of quality I demand of myself and that you, the viewer, have a right to demand of me. So I decided to take a step back. Today, however, I finally feel able to return. So I'll do so with a monthly wrap. But before coming on to that, I have three brief items of channel news. Firstly, a huge thank you to the channel's benefactors, Richard, Michael and Clutterbuck, who between them contributed a staggering 26 coffees to my funds in the month of March. I'm truly grateful, not only for your generous donations, but also for your touching messages of support. And if anyone else wishes to follow the example of these noble individuals, you'll find the donate link on the channel homepage and also in the description below. Secondly, the channel is rapidly approaching 1000 subscribers. I think there are only 14 more needed to reach that goal. So there'll be some kind of special video in the coming weeks to mark that milestone. Lastly, the channel of a disappointed man server continues to be an extremely active place in which to discuss literature. So I'd urge anyone who has not yet done so to come over and join the conversation. The link to that is also in the description. OK, we're ready now, finally, to talk about the books I read this month. And we begin with this mammoth, The Complete Stories of Edgar Allan Poe. This took up the bulk of my reading time in March. And what an experience. Yes, one of the great literary experiences of my life. I'd read many of the classic Poe stories, but to just read them in this sustained way, one after the other day after day was just magnificent. He's not one of those writers where his work is very samey. There's so much variety in here. I have to say, honestly, I never got bored. Yes, there are a couple of rather weak pieces, but surprisingly few when you consider the nature of his career and his personal circumstances. And if I had to pick out just one as the absolute summit, you know, the one that demonstrates the full powers of his genius, it would be the fall of the House of Usher. So I'm going to try and find a link to a good audio version of that, because I feel with tales such as these, they're rather well suited to just sitting back in the dark and having someone read them to you. So I'll put that in the description too. If you haven't read this, I strongly urge you to do so. I should note that I did not read his only novel, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, which is in here. I'm going to read it in this standalone Modern Library edition. OK, next we have Gothic novels. I've already shown this a few times because it is three in one. It's got The Castle of Otranto, um, Vathek by William Beckford and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Castle of Otranto, of course, is by Horace Walpole. So I read Vathek and Frankenstein this month, and I have to say, I didn't enjoy my reread of Frankenstein. I think it's the third time as much as the second one. Perhaps I just exhausted that text rather. And Vathek also, I didn't find greatly interesting. It's very lurid. There's so much excess. The body count in this novel is enormous. It's the first Oriental Gothic tale in English, although it was written originally in French. So it does have that distinction. If you do like Vathek, however, I strongly recommend Byron's narrative poem, The Jower, which is rather similar and is also notable for being the way in which the vampire moves from the Eastern European culture into the mainstream of Western culture. So if you're really into vampires, you may be interested in the 20 lines or so in this, where the vampire is introduced. You can see it's Genesis, as it were. Then we have an illness narrative. It's this a journey round my skull in this New York Review Books classics by Frigyes Corinthi. I don't think I've said it very well. OK, but he was a Hungarian intellectual, poet, essayist, short story writer, novelist. Yeah, 
a man of many parts, and he was diagnosed with what turned out to be a brain tumour. But in the early part of the book, he's not aware really of what's wrong with him. And he has these really disturbing experiences. It's not only absolutely fascinating, I have to say it is brilliantly written. It is a masterpiece. I don't often say this on the channel. I don't believe I've ever said this, but truly anyone into high quality writing is going to enjoy this. Pretty much guaranteed. So I'll be making a video about this in due course. And then lastly, I've been fitting in the poems of John Keats. It's on my desk at work. Every time the children go out at break time, I'll pick it up and I'll just quickly see how much of a poem I can read. And I think I've read everything he published in 1817. I'll just tell you the one I thought was the best. Yeah, it's this one. I stood tiptoe upon a little hill. Yeah, that was really touching. There's a strong Spencer influence at work. So he does return to themes of chivalry in a number of these short poems, which I, for my part, really enjoyed. And there are quite a few references to Lee Hunt, his fellow poet, who was in prison for some of that year. And there's one celebrating Lee Hunt's release from prison. If you're not familiar with Lee Hunt, he is famously fictionalised by Charles Dickens in, I believe it's Bleak House, as Skimpole. So you could always check that out. I uh, hope to read the output for 1818 next. So there we have it. That's my reading for the month of March. All that remains is for me to nominate my book of the month and then to bid you farewell in time-honoured fashion. Now, I'm rather torn on the question of what should be the book of the month. And I'm thinking that perhaps choosing a collection rather violates the spirit of the rules, even though I haven't written those rules down and those rules are my rules. And so I'd be free to amend them if I so wished. But still, I just don't think it's right, particularly as in the coming month, I'm looking to read a huge collection of Kipling's tales and all of Melville's shorter fiction. So no, I won't go with Poe. I'll go with Frigius Corinthians, A Journey Round My Skull, a worthy winner in any case. All right. All that remains is, as I promised, to bid you farewell. So until the next time, be safe, be strong. Nanu, nanu.